Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Tuesday, which means it's time for a new episode of FL Basic Tutorials. It's time for a new FL Basic Tutorial. Yes. Yes. Uh, today, we're going to talk about line editors. Line editors. And what is that exactly? Well, it's pretty much whenever you see a graph inside any plugin in FL, like, for example, inside a Citrus, like this, uh, these are referred to as line editors. These sorts of things. And they show up whenever there's any kind of, uh, you know, two function graph. So, you know, or two parameter graph, an X and a Y. That makes it makes the graph kind of thing. Like, so for example, uh, this particular one, this is the mod into mod X. This is the modulation input of an operator in, in Citrus. And this is, the, this is it, it's mapping to the mod X uh, automation, as in this knob here. So what this means, like this, this setup here means that when the knob is at zero, the value is at zero, and when the knob is at top, the value is at top. So over here we have knob value, and here we have parameter value on on the y axis and knob value on the x axis. So you can ha you can have these lines, but you can you know change them up and do crazy things and make wacky automation as a result. And every time you see anything that could be a line editor that could be edited like this, they all have very similar uh, like terms or whatever that are associated to them and also methods of editing. So right off the bat, the usual default is that you'll have this sort of right click to place a dot mode. Um, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's not called step editing because step editing is the other one. And you can enable it by looking around and you'll see a you know, step option kind of thing somewhere. And uh, what this will do is it turns, it turns it into a pencil and then you draw lines like so. And it doesn't actually make it doesn't actually make a line. Like you're not actually making a line, and then it's whatever. It makes a series of points to approximate the line that you drew, and then you have all sorts of options to mess with it. Like for example, the decimate points option to uh, limit how detailed the resulting uh, graph is. It's the kind of deal. Uh, so you draw left click, and then if you right click, it deletes them all, kind of thing. Except for the first two that were there. There always has to be one at the beginning and one at the end for most of these internal kinds of options. Um, yeah, so you also will usually have a, a snap option, which will make it so that it snaps to whatever grid there is, kind of thing. Uh, freeze will make it so that you can't actually edit it, but you can click around and see you know, what values and stuff there are. And the slide option is when you move, you have like, it's a whole bunch of points and then you have a point in between. With it, with it off, it will change the length of its two, the two lines that are in between but it will not move the points that are adjacent to it. If you turn on slide, it'll move the points that are to the right of it uh, on to, to the right. It'll basically move the whole thing over, no matter what's in front of it, kind of thing. Until it gets to an end, but then it won't change the shape of uh, the automation that you, blah, 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 that you drew. Yeah. I call it automation because also this is the same sort of interface that you get when you automate something. When you have an automation clip, you get a line editor. And the automation clips work similarly. You know, it's a function of time over position. So as time progresses, the value of the parameter that you're modulating changes. That's pretty straightforward. Now you have the same options. You right click, and then you have you have slide on, you have it off, and you turn it on and off by these options over here. I covered this in the automation tutorial, so I'll keep this brief. But then this is also where the step edit option is. Yes. You also notice it's snapping to the horizontal or the vertical lines. If you hold down alt, it will not snap. You also see that it changes the length on the fly. If I were to delete it, also changes the length on the fly. Isn't that neat? Other line editors include such things as Maximus has a line editor. The main in out graph is the is a line editor. And the graph that this is is input as in the level of the audio that goes into Maximus and then output, which is what Maximus brings the level to. So this does, for Maximus, this is a very specifically awesome thing because this means that if I do something like this, which is not a common compressor curve, uh, you get as like, it, if something is at zero dB, then it's pretty much unchanged. But as it comes down, oh, it gets, it gets quieter, it gets quieter, it gets brought down. And then it's like minus 12 dB. Now it's suddenly very loud. It's actually being brought up to plus six dB. Like that's what this is doing. It's it's forcing the audio that's normally at minus twelve to plus six. So that's what that's what that does, and it's very interesting. I'll cover the implications of that when I do an actual Maximus tutorial, which I will do at some point. Uh, you also get one get a couple in the Fruity Convolver, 
you get the EQ curve, which is by default already on step edit mode. So you can draw lines and stuff, which I find pretty useful for the purposes of making this EQ work. Yeah. Of course you could turn it on to turn it off and you get these back to having, you know, lines. Now, every step edit graph uses these points. They work on the point system and then all the points are pretty much, they pretty much work the same. So if I right click it and get a bunch of options. You can copy value, which is actually, a, uh, you can do that for any parameter, which is really handy for if you want to have a value of something and then have that match in the point, it'll actually, you know, work that way. But you also have line options, you, you know, various, all sorts of curve options and they all do different, different things and screw around with them. You'll find different uses for, for the stuff in general. Uh, particularly cool one is uh, the pulse option, which uh, creates this sort of business going on. And this could be fun if you screw with something like gross beat, which is a, pretty much a giant line editor for time and volume. Yeah, see, line editor. And this by default uh, on the uh, on the gate, uh, the volume thing is set to have the hold value, which uh, creates a super sharp curve on or it's not a curve, it's a sharp, sharp, sharp automation. It's a square, it makes squares. So that means that the, the value stays at what it was originally until the point that you set where it suddenly changes over. Yeah. And that can be handy. Vocadex also has line editors. See how this works out. Now, here's, here's a cool thing about line editors in NFL. Much like the, the Maximus example, which... Um, showed you how you could you can use line edit line edit changes to do very unorth unorthodox things to a otherwise very normal plugin um the line editors are also working also work for the uh adsr uh systems that are in fl like in F fpc and also like in things like citrus that have adsr and harmer as well now if you see here we have these curves and if i move them they don't actually change the position of the red but this weird gray thing kind of keeps happening. That's because it's multiplying the uh, position of the data here. But what this data is, is actually determined by right clicking it. And then you see, you get a bunch of additional values for the ADSR uh, graph types. But just like Maximus though, you can really screw with this. And suddenly you have a, a very weird sort of uh, volume envelope. But then see the way that, the way that, um. Harmer does this too, but the way that Citrus works is that you have two rows of, you have the parameter row and then you have the modifier row. So that means that you can go to say pitch and then you have an envelope and then you set the envelope line editor for the pitch. So then something like something like having the, uh, the pulse option is really interesting. If I could find the center of this, there it is. Is released on the pitch over here. It's basically FM. Um, so anyway, uh, that's neat. It's neat things, just ideas that you can have because yeah, you can have all the sort of uh, types. Also, okay, so you can save states and you can open states of line graphs. And this is neat because you can, like, for example, save this uh, crazy state. Now, this, that's, um, that's an envelope state, right? And I can open this state in the... Uh, where you at? Where you at, crazy state? Hmm. Envelopes. Yes. So now I'm in the crazy state. And it totally didn't open. Okay. So I just proved myself wrong. ADSR is apparently different from normal graph modes, but the point being is that you can save these states. You can open them up later. And uh, envelope state file is different from, I guess, the uh, mod curves, the modifier envelopes, which I guess makes sense because uh, over here, if we right click this, we don't get the, the attack and release uh, options that we get when we go over here and we actually define where the, the K starts, when the loop starts, and where the loop ends and that sort of stuff. This is for making your own uh, live envelopes kind of deal. That's what that's for. So we, I have learned something today. We learned something together. Good. Because I don't know everything. Mm. 
researching this would have helped. Uh, that's really pretty much what I wanted to show off is like how, how the, line, the line graphs work. There's not really anything particularly uh, special or like confusing about them. Like if you're pretty intuitive, like, you know, they weren't very confusing when I started using them. But the one thing that was confusing was pretty much the idea of the step edit. Because, um, see, now it's a weird now because the last curve type I used was pulse. When I wanted to turn it back to a single curve. Yeah, so that's also something that we learned. Um, none of this is decay, so it has no idea that there's an attack, so it's not changing the attack. It's pretty much what that is. Um, anyway, uh, step edit is what turns on this, and then snap also is what turns on the very fine mode. And then you also see that it's also repeating the last thing that you did. So, like, if I... Uh, got rid of all this, put down a couple. Oh, see, now they're straight lines. It's because I have the first the first point over here was the only one left, and it was a normal a normal line. But it usually repeats, you know, your last the last points that you made, kind of thing. So yes, this is step edit mode. Clicking will part to put a point. Right clicking will turn off a point. And if you right click, you can put down points without step edit mode, and you can do more more fine tune place points down, which is my preferred method of doing something like automation, you know. I don't like to manually draw in automation. <laughs> yeah, again, because of the line type. Yeah. There we go. I mean, you could. And this would basically turn into an event edit, which is a, an entirely different kind of uh, automation type for FL. It's one that pre precursor... Um, Precursor. It came before automation clips. Yeah. So, if I have any questions about what just happened, uh, let me know, and I'll try to answer you, and we'll find out together whether or not I know what I'm talking about. And as usual, have a nice day.